My name's Jim Hemp. Uh, Jeff Tyner and I uh, are partners uh, with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group and perform robotic cardiac surgery here at Scripps Mercy Hospital. We want to welcome you all tonight. Uh, our presentation is going to give you some idea of what robotic cardiac surgery is all about, how it's the same and how it's different from uh, conventional uh, surgery. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the development of uh, robotic applications to surgery and then we'll finish up with uh, four different categories of uh, disease that we treat using robots uh, that, that affect the heart. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, get into the slideshow here. I'm going to do a little toggling back and forth because I got some videos I just got to show you. So this is a, a very new concept uh, for Jeff and I. Uh, we've, we've known about robots since the 1990s. There were earlier iterations that I messed around with in various laboratories working on experimental models trying to to see if it really was a clinically applicable technology. And as of about the year 2000, I, I had decided it wasn't ready for prime time, at least for my practice. It was cumbersome, it, it was not something that really made the surgery easier, and it, it didn't change the outcome for the patient. So at, at about that time, I had put it aside as a, as a technology that was, a, that was really readily available and uh, good for us. Uh, however, uh, in the year 2002, the FDA approved a much uh, more advanced robot uh, for cardiac surgery use, and that's the one that you saw uh, Dr. Salem demonstrate uh, in the course of her lecture. We use the, the exact same machine, um, and it is wonderfully dexterous. It, it gives me a better view of the heart. It gives me uh, all sorts of benefits uh, that I don't have with traditional surgery. But more importantly than what it helps me with as a surgeon is what it does for the patient. And uh, so I, I can tell you all kinds of reasons to use it. There's less wound burden. There's less uh, spreading of the tissues. There's less blood loss. Uh, there's less chance of infection. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of good outcomes. The cosmetic aspects are improved. But the, the truth is that this tells you more than any list of uh, reasons to use the robot. The gentleman on your left had the surgery that we've been doing since the 1950s, which is called a median sternotomy, and it involves going up and down the middle of the breastbone and spreading the, the ribs along their uh, joints along the spine to allow us access to the heart. This allows us to do all sorts of complex cardiac procedures in a very reliable way and has been the mainstay of our practice for a long time. If you look in the literature, the complication rates from doing this kind of procedure are in the 1 to 3 percent range, where the, the bone doesn't heal well or infection sets in, something of that nature happens. But the reality of practice is that if you looked at every patient who had some kind of issue with this incision or had some kind of chronic discomfort related to it or some kind of uh, uh, limitation in their life as a result of it, it probably would be closer to 15 or 20 percent. So most people get over it, they move on with their lives, they've got the scar and that's about it. But a lot of people have some sort of disability or outright complication related to it. And just fundamentally, this is a bigger hit on the body to do all the things that we routinely do to try to take good care of the heart. The gentleman on the right had a robotic approach. Now, you know, the, the first thing that catches your eye is that the incisions are all smaller. It almost looks like he got attacked by pygmies there. Uh, rather than had a surgery. But th that is uh, five, small in that, uh, five small incisions on the right side of the chest and an additional incision in the groin. And that, that approach doesn't involve any spreading of the ribs, cutting of the sternal bone, any distraction of the muscle. That's it. We go in. You're going to see this later in the lecture. It's fundamentally different in terms of the insult to the body. So at the end of the case, we don't even close anything but the skin. There's, there's nothing else to close because we've gone in through the spaces between the ribs to take care of things. And so while it cosmetically is also better, the, the thing that's impressive to us as surgeons is that this does not create as much of a burden for the patient to get over in terms of healing. This is what all these small incisions are for. These are called trocars, and this allows us to put the robot arms in and do the work. I'm sure you saw 
similar pictures with Carolyn's presentation. This, this black opening right here is just a port through the ribs that gives our bedside assistant a view inside the chest to uh, uh, help us uh, get the materials we need at the point of attack uh, on the heart. The, one of many things about the robot that I didn't recognize when I first got excited about this technology is that this is, this is really adding an assistant. Not only do you have robot arms that are very dexterous and they, they replace your own arms being right on the surface of the heart, but there's another set of arms that you control as the surgeon that will do exactly what you want. So rather than having a half asleep intern holding a retractor and kind of wavering and all, you can, you can have that retractor right where you want it and doing exactly what you want to do. In addition, you've got the bedside assistant who is looking at a video screen and working through that little opening on the previous slide and providing assistance with a much better view than that assistant would ever have in a traditional open procedure. It's a little counterintuitive in that you got this big incision, you'd think everybody could see fine, but various aspects of the heart that we work on can be difficult to see just because of their location. And the application of the robot allows everybody to see better. And this, this visualization turns out to be a huge deal. This is another thing that I, I didn't understand when I got into this. But in this uh, OR that we use here at Mercy, we have no less than four screens that show various aspects of what we're doing, either via echo or via the uh, robot camera itself, which is a very sophisticated, high-definition camera with uh, actually two... Um, two lenses so you get uh, depth perception. You actually get kind of a 3D view. Uh, and then you can also be looking at the vital signs at the same time. So this is plastered throughout the room, whereas for a traditional surgery, you're yelling at the nurses and telling everybody to do things because you're seeing a problem that nobody else understands what's going on. With the robot, everybody knows what you're doing the entire case. And uh, you got a huge peanut gallery, basically. You got people who are seeing everything all the time. The anticipation of the OR crew is tremendously improved by this. They see what's going on in the case. They know when you're getting ready to transition to a different part of the case. Everybody's into it. Everybody's watching the case, and they're helping you. That's the bottom line, is you've got more eyes on the problem. It's an improvement. It's, it's not limiting anything. It's actually enhancing things. All of this adds up to a ton more help. Uh, this is uh, one of our partners here in practice, Cheryl Healy, a nurse practitioner. She's the bedside assistant for my cases. And you can see here that we've docked the robot. She's working through this port that I showed you earlier, and she's looking at one of these video screens over here to do her work. She has the, the same view via the video screen and her own port access as I have. Mine's a little bit uh, better resolution because I've got binocular vision and hers is just one of those cameras, but that's a view that, that an assistant would never have otherwise. So why doesn't everybody just use the robot? Well, in surgery, generally you, you master a procedure and then you add one thing at a time if you're going to evolve. You change the type of suture you use. You use a different instrument to, to get the suture in place. You use a different type of energy source to do some aspect of the procedure to try to make things better or faster or more durable. But everything else is the same. It's the same procedure you do day in and day out. And it's safe, it's reproducible, it works fine. The robot is a gigantic departure from that. So rather than... Uh, buying a, a Lexus instead of a Toyota, you're going from a bicycle to the space shuttle. And so you're, you're, everything is different. The way you support the body while you're working on the heart, the way you protect the heart. Everything is a, a different process. You don't have the same instruments that you normally use. You've got your hands in the uh, robot instruments, which are right here. And I'm sure Carol showed you this, but your hands are underneath this console and moving the fingers like this creates huge movements in the robot. 